What's up, guys? Rick here with your betting and one and done preview for this week's tour championship. It's a very interesting week because of the format of the event. There is a starting strokes component. So imagine it like we have already played one round of golf because guys are going to enter with a score. Uh, and this is indeed the last event of the season. Uh, but have no fear. The the new season starts uh in two weeks. Yeah, there's only one week off. This is the best part about golf. There is one week off, and then we are going to Napa for the start of the new season. So if you've liked any of the content, enjoyed anything, do me a favor, hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed. I won't ask again for a while. Let's jump into this week's betting and one and done preview. Here is the tournament predictor tool on rickrungood.com. This is where every single week I simulate the event uh, 1,000 times. And in this case, uh, I did indeed use the starting strokes because of the, the the systems that I have in place. And you can see uh, why I believe there is probably only four or five guys with a real likelihood of winning this event. Because Patrick Cantlay won my simulation 38% of the time. He is going to start at 10 under par. So already, uh, not only two shots clear of... Tony Finau in second, uh, but basically, you know, if you did the strokes gained for this, uh, he would have basically gained over seven strokes on the field if there was round zero, call it round zero before the event started. So um, to me, he is, or and, and to the simulation, the, the, the math is really hard for a lot of guys to win this. So Cantlay won it 38% of the time, which is actually, um, it's actually bettable. You know, he's four to one at DraftKings and points bet and Caesars. Uh, or points bet has him at three and a half to one. Bet MGM has, has him at 3.3. Caesars and DraftKings has him at four to one. Caesars is doing a bunch of crazy promotions uh, since they rebranded to Caesars. So if you go to rickrungood.com slash bets, you can find out uh, the best available offer in your state. Uh, John Rahm wins it 23% of the time. Bryson, 18%. Tony Finau, about 14%. That's the vast majority of of the win equity in this field. Then you have guys like Cam Smith at 1%, Justin Thomas at 1%, Harris English, Jordan Spieth 1% of the time. Um, so really, the 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 model indicates there's probably only one-ish bet to make, and it's probably Patrick Cantlay. It's not all that exciting, but that's, that's kind of the results. Now, if you did not watch the DFS preview, uh, I do want to encourage you to go watch that and encourage you to download the matrix that I created and I'll show you right now. Hey guys, real quick, not sure if you heard, but Caesars bought William Hill and they have now rebranded the William Hill Sportsbook as Caesars Sportsbook. And because of this, they're going absolutely bonkers outside their mind with promotions. And the big one is that they're offering $5,000 in free bets. That is not uh, an exaggeration. You did not mishear me. $5,000. It's the highest I've ever seen. It is uh, by far, I'm sure, the highest any book has offered since gambling has become legalized state by state. It's it's absolutely nuts. You don't have to use it for golf. You can use it for whatever. Go to rickrungood.com slash bets. See if it's available in your state. I'll keep you updated as more states roll out. I know there's a couple coming uh, on the horizon here, but my goodness, it is uh, something you should definitely be taking advantage of, of, of if you have not yet. This matrix, um, and it's available on rickrungood.com. If you can look on the left-hand side, it says download matrix underneath cheat sheet. You can download this. You can mess with this. This is actually probably better for outrights than it is for um, for DFS purposes because it's going to show you how likely or what it's going to take for someone to win this event. Um, so if every single golfer plays to their average for four rounds, Patrick Cantlay wins. If John Rahm plays slightly above average, let's call it to the 65th percentile and everyone else plays to their average, John Rahm wins. So what would it take for Rory McIlroy to win? And I think I did this illustration in the DFS preview, but McIlroy's odds with the starting strokes are much too short. And I think people are giving him much too much credit. As much as I love Rory, and as much as we saw him win this event from five back, to win from eight back is going to be jarringly difficult. Um, for a couple of reasons. So so let's say what he needs to do to win is for him to have a 92nd percentile 
performance. And I believe when I illustrated that in the DFS preview, it is basically something that the amount of strokes that he would have to gain about 13.3 is something he does maybe once a year, maybe once every two years. And with all of that being said, there are basically 15 guys ahead of him that if any of those 15 guys play slightly above their average, Rory still doesn't win. You know, it's a it's a really tough path to victory for Rory McIlroy and really anybody else outside of Cantlay, Finau, Bryson, Rahm, and I'd even throw Cam Smith into the conversation. So I won't bore you with the matrix details. Again, I did. I spent a lot of time on it in the DFS preview. Highly encourage you to go check that out. Um, but but in the outright market, it shows how hard it's going to be for someone further down the board to come back and win this event. So I do want to talk about the difference between the the with starting strokes and without starting strokes situations here. Uh, on the left, I have the odds from Caesars uh, with the strokes, and on the right, I have the odds from Caesars without the starting strokes. Now. You really need to pay attention to this, and if you have the ability to shop around and look at different books, there are some books that have built-in value. For example, there are some books that are offering uh, Justin Thomas, for example, at 16 to 1 without the starting strokes, and about 16 to 1 with the starting strokes. Now, I'm not super thrilled on Justin Thomas this week, but there is a little bit of value built in there. Um, Also, consider this. If you're going to bet... Uh, someone like John Rahm at four to one with the strokes, meaning he's going to start four shots back. If you're going to bet that, you also have to bet to John Rahm to win without the strokes. Uh, because if John Rahm wins with the strokes and essentially makes up four strokes on Patrick Cantlay and the other guys at the top, he's almost certainly going to win without the strokes. So you have to also take that one as well. I would uh, be very cautious to bet guys at the top of the leaderboard entering the week. Uh, I'd be very hard-pressed to bet them without the strokes. Uh, Because Patrick Cantlay, let's say take Patrick Cantlay for an example here. He's 3.5-1 to at Caesars with the strokes because he's starting at at 10 under, but 14-1 to without strokes. And people are probably thinking, oh, well, Patrick Cantlay, he's playing well. You know, he's just coming off a victory. I'll bet him at 14 to 1. But the issue is that his his incentives are not going to be aligned with your incentives if you bet him without the strokes. So he might be looking at every single leaderboard knowing, oh, okay, I've got a two-shot lead. For example, I'm not going to put the foot down on the on the on the gas. I can play this a little bit safe when he might be trailing without the strokes, right? So there's just you it's really hard to bet guys when their incentives and their goals do not align with yours. So I would be very cautious about that. Um I do believe there is a little bit of value uh with strokes on Tony Finau. He is kind of the forgotten man here. I I was ready to bet John Rahm at like six to one, seven to one with the strokes, have him be four shots back, let him chase, no problem there. To see that some places even opened him up as the favorite, uh, that's a bit much. But four to one and Cantlay's only three and a half to one, that's tough. But like, what's the path for Finau to win this thing? Let's look. So, um, assuming every single other player plays to their average, Tony Finau needs a 75th percentile performance to win. That's him gaining about 7.8 strokes over the course of the week. Well, how often does he do that? 7.8. BMW Championship was 4.8, so no. He gained double that at the Northern Trust, so yep, he won that event. Um, Very close at the Open Championship, 6.8. He gained 9 at the PGA Championship. That would be enough to get it done. Uh, The WGC Workday Concession, 7.4 very close there, 6.8 at the Masters, very close there, gained that many at the Genesis, the Farmers, and the American Express. So, I mean, there is a a handful of times he's done it this season and a couple more times that he's been really, really close. So when you compare that to, like, what we asked of Rory McIlroy, this isn't that big of an ask, a 75th percentile performance. Now, um, it actually, that also assumes Cantlay plays to his average. What if Cantlay plays... A little bit worse than average. You know, if if Cantlay plays to 
a 40th percentile performance, and Tony Finau plays to a 60, let's see what it would take, about a 65th percentile. 60, yeah, 65th percentile performance, which would be six strokes gained. Well, now he does that, you know, very often. So it, there's a very clear, easy path for Tony Finau to get to victory here, uh, especially because he's only trailing one golfer coming in. So I think that that's really the only bet I believe I want to make um, with the strokes. I wasn't particularly thrilled with the offerings and how few guys I already think can win. But I think Finau is kind of the forgotten man there. The rest of these bets with uh, with the strokes to me are, these are kind of sucker bets, right? I, I love Sam Burns. I love Rory McIlroy. I love Jordan Spieth and Xander Shoffley. But the ask for these guys to win with the starting strokes is incredibly high. And it is way more than 25 to 1. You know, 25 to 1 implies what? They're going to win this event um, 4% of the time. Is that right? It's early. I'm recording this early. 4% of the time. It, it, it is, there's just, there's just no way. There's just no way. Um, not that often. Now, without strokes, things, things get a lot more interesting. You know, you see the significant price that you're going to have to pay on Xander Schauffele, who's been fantastic at Eastlake, and the, and the price you're going to have to pay on Roy McIlroy at 11 to 1. Um, there is uh, a, a couple of things that interested me in the non-strokes market. So one is Daniel Berger, and uh, Berger is right here. He's 28 to 1. So the good news about Berger is uh, he's going to start at even, which means he is absolutely incentivized to just go ham, right? Just full throttle, try to make up as much ground as possible. The other thing with Daniel Berger is um, this is the last chance for his kind of Ryder Cup tryout. And especially with Finau winning in the last couple of weeks, uh, Patrick Cantlay winning in the last couple of weeks, those guys have solidified their spot on the U.S. Ryder Cup team now. When Three weeks ago, that wasn't really the case. And that has put a lot of uh, stress and a lot of uh, questions into whether Daniel Berger or even Sam Burns into this story as well are going to make the team. And this is the last opportunity to impress Captain Stricker. Uh, and one way to impress Captain Stricker would be to go out and make a lot of noise at the Tour Championship. So uh, this is a situation where you get really good odds on, on a player who is very incentivized um, and starting in a position where they, they they need to go really really low, and if that wasn't enough for you, I'll pull back the um, the golfer profiles here. You know, Daniel Berger has been uh, fantastic. You know, this is a, a second shot course, East Lake. It is one that requires you to be uh, you know really dialed in on your second shots. He has not lost strokes on approach since the waste management. That was in February. Uh, he's won since then. He's got a couple more top 10 finishes since then. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly on board with everything that kind of points itself in the direction of Daniel Berger. Let's look at some head to head matchups here. And, um, I, I want to continue with this Berger conversation, but what it looks like most books are doing is they're giving you head to head matchups that include the starting strokes, but it seems like they are matching up guys that are starting at the same score. So it's a couple guys that started even Guys that started at one, both start at one under, things of that nature. So um, that's good news. We can still use the simulator for this. And I want to just continue with Daniel Berger. No, not badly. Berger. Um, Berger versus Sergio Garcia. They're both starting at even par. I have Berger, since the start of 2020, winning this in a big way, 68% of the time, uh, which is about minus 220. He is minus 160 to Sergio Garcia's plus 130. So this would be a bet. Even if you want to look at the start of 2021, yeah, similar. 64%, it's minus 181. So I think either way you slice this, uh, this is probably a bet on Daniel Berger. There's a couple of really fascinating ones here. You know, um, Fan or not Fandle, uh DraftKings has Rom as a minus two oh five favorite over Tony Finau at plus one sixty five, and that is Rom giving two strokes to Finau. So uh, 
I don't know. I don't, my, my model doesn't calculate the, this, I guess I could whip something up, but, um, I have Rom being close to that about a minus two forty two uh, over Tony Finau in a four round matchup with both guys starting at zero. But I imagine two strokes is a pretty big deal in this. I would hate to bet against John Rom. I'm just not sure. And I don't have any evidence to back this up, but I'm not sure that adds up. I'd have to mess around with that. But Finau at plus 165, starting two shots clear, both incentivized to make a move. That I probably won't bet it, but I, I think I lean the Finau side. And then there was one more that I thought was interesting. Um, Answer and English. These are two guys that have been so solid. I was just dying to see what the results were. They're both going to start, I think, at four under. And uh, DraftKings has them at uh, minus 110. Okay, yeah, I do have I have English or excuse me, I have answer winning this 58% of the time, minus 140. He's minus, you know, they're both minus 110, so maybe this is a bet on answer. So Berger over Sergio, probably. I lean, I lean the Finau over Rom. Might be a little bit scary to bet Rom. The the concern with Rom, you're down two strokes, and you haven't he hasn't played the weekend well for two weeks in a row. And I don't know. I don't know. That seems like a lot. I love John Rahm. He is he is a force, but that seems a little bit off. And then probably answer over English um, for a little bit as well. All right, and finally for the one and done, I think I can make this pretty quick and pretty easy. Uh, your one and done is probably over. If it's if it's not, are you playing with the starting strokes? If you are, you need to take the golfer who is going to start the highest on the leaderboard. If you're not playing with the starting strokes, you just take the golfer who has the best odds to win without the starting strokes. There you go. I just I just answered all the possible one and done questions. Just go down the odds board or go down the leaderboard until you find a golfer that you still have available. If you do want to do a little bit of East Lake research, because I got to tell you, uh, East Lake's a very consistent course. We always get the same you know thirty players there at the same time of year. We have great data on it. Um, if you go to the Holy Grail, if you go to strokes gained by tournament, you search by East Lake. You can see all the players in the field and how they play well. Uh, no surprise to see Xander be dominant here. No surprise to see. Roy Rory be dominant here. Scotty Scheffler's been great, but he's only played it once. He only has those four rounds. Billy Horschel has been great here. Um, you know, you can see the opposite end of the spectrum as well. Kevin Na, horrific in 20 rounds. Uh, arguably, maybe the worst play, the worst, the place that he has the worst results at. Uh, Joaquin Neiman's been terrible, but that's only one event. So you can kind of go through if you have a couple of guys available and see, hey, maybe this guy plays a little bit better. Maybe this guy's played a little bit worse. But generally speaking, um, this is now process of elimination. Who do you have left? Who's the highest on the leaderboard? Who's the highest on the odds board? And move on with your season. Um, unless you're chasing and you want to make up ground. And if you have a couple people left, then you can use, you can use the Holy Grail. But uh, I can't imagine too many have many decisions to be made because uh, for the last month I've been saying plan out your final four right now. So hopefully you have taken heed, taken heed of that warning. Um, okay. That'll do it. Betting in one and done preview for this week's tour championship. Thank you for the support all season long. I'm not going anywhere. There will be plenty of content, uh, the rest of the week in live chats. I'll probably update some tools and tutorials and maybe do some evergreen content next week. Uh, and then we're right back at it. So it's all good. The golf vlogs will continue. So um, if you are looking for a break from me, you probably will not get it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Rick Run Good, or you can leave a comment below. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you guys soon.